Are you okay? I'm lost. Why? I'm trying to figure out the best way to connect ChatGPT with my own data. So I don't know if I should use Azure Cognitive Search for indexing my words and retrieval or I should use word embeddings and create a vector database. I'm confused, very confused. Well, you can use a hybrid approach. What? Well, recently Azure Cognitive Search added a new capability which enables you to store your word embeddings as a vector database and index them using cognitive search. That means now you can have maybe both semantic search and even word embedding based search to retrieve your knowledge and have it in your chat with your data scenario. Can you show it to me now? Sure. Can we pause recording? I just burned my leg. Damn. Let's go! Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to another video. Well, we already talked a lot about how you can chat with your old data or connecting your enterprise data to ChatGPT. For example, you should chunk your data and, and sort of figure out a way that you can index your data and bring the relevant information based on the question asked from your chatbot to let GPT models answer that question. Well, I heard a lot of questions from you which were certainly valid, which is how can I develop the, the best efficient retrieval process? Shall I use Azure Cognitive Search? for indexing my data so when someone asks a question cognitive search will bring the relevant sources to support the answer of that question or we have seen people use word embeddings that means you have to create a database a vector database you need to store your word embeddings there and then when someone asks a question based on the similarity of the embeddings of your question versus your data sources then we bring that relevant data and answer the question but which one is better which one is more accurate which one is more scalable there's really no sharp answer and a fixed answer to that question but there is a less risky and recent solution that we're going to talk about in this video which is a hybrid approach you can actually have maybe both of them because recently azure cognitive search added a new capability which means you can now use Azure Cognitive Search as your vector database so you can bring your word embeddings to Cognitive Search and save it there as a vector database and Cognitive Search can index it for you so if you have text videos images and different type of modality of your data you can have them all generated by embeddings and store them in vector database of Cognitive Search and start retrieving them let's say for your chat video data scenario well let's check it out that what are these the details of this recent capability and what are the best practices and maybe see a quick start to to leverage that in action then let's check it out before we start make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video thank you all right welcome back everyone and let's get into the new capability azure added to azure <laughs> added to azure cognitive search called vector search well, when we started to talk about how you can chat with your own data using OpenAI models like GPT 3.5, GPT 4, then we started to talk about we need to figure out a way to bring the source of data we need to ask our questions against them. And let's show those sources of data in our prompt to the models. And because these models have token limit, we have to show a specific part of data, our data, which is relevant to that question to answer that question by these models. And then the main concern was how we can retrieve the le relevant sources of data from my data sources to the prompt based on the user question. Then we already talked about word embeddings. We already talked about using cognitive search indexing to bring that relevant source of data for answering someone's question. And I will add that to the top right of the screen here and also in the video description make sure you watch this video out before you come into this video because then you will have a better understanding of what is the proposed value of this new feature that we're going to talk about 
Well, then I got the question from you that shall I use Azure Cognitive Search for using semantic search and bring that relevant data I need for answering someone's question, or I should create a vector database and generate word embeddings and calculate the distance between word embeddings to bring that source of data to the prompt and start chatting with my data. Now today with this new capability, you no longer need to create your own vector database or compare it with cognitive search because now Azure Cognitive Search has everything. It can do semantic search, for bringing or retrieving that source of data for you. What is semantic search? It is actually, I think, using a, a deep learning model. There you go, a deep learning model on back end of cognitive search to query your data and bring it to the prompt to answer your question. And this is actually what Bing search use as well. I mean, semantic search. But now, beside this, you can also have vector search. That means, yes, you can now use cognitive search like your vector database and index that vector so next time when you ask a question it will generate embeddings and compare them but of course it doesn't generate word embeddings by itself but that's fine we do have azure open AI models or some even open source models i can use them to generate embeddings and then let cognitive search to host them and i can query them okay so before we begin and show you an example what is, the, what is the reason that I should use vector search? And, and what are the scenarios that I can use? First of all, when we say vector, word embeddings are a vector. But those embeddings can be generated not just for text. You can have images to generate embeddings out of them. That means if you have different type of data, videos that can be converted to images or text, you can generate embeddings uh, out of them, create vectors, and save all of them in the same place, which is now the vector database of Cognitive Search. So next time when you query something or you want to retrieve some knowledge, it shouldn't be just text. It can be image and videos as well. And how you generate embedding out of images, that's a bit of different scenario. For example, here you can use uh, some models like Clip for doing so, or you can use also another Cognitive Service API on Azure I think it is under um, uh, vision services that you can generate even embeddings out of images too. So the first benefit, you can have search across different data types because all of them can be compared to embeddings as we discussed. The one that we're going to focus on further is that we can also now search our text based on their vector embeddings instead of just doing a keyword search or just doing the semantic search if you have text with multiple languages because by the end of the day they're going to be converted to vectors so we can query even um, our sources of data if they are even in different languages because by the end of the day vectors represent the context regardless of what is the language that's going to get carried by the model that they generate embedding for us and the one that should be the answer of your question that, hey, MG, which one I should use for retrieving knowledge? I should go with semantic search, cognitive search, or vector database. Now you can have all of them. Because cognitive search support all of them, you can get the results with all different approaches that cognitive search support. That means using semantic search or word embedding based search and get the result from all of them and then do ranking and see which one is saying what. So that means you can now have everything combined all together instead of deciding which one I should choose. And there are much more. I'm just I'm not going to read all these documents here. Just wanted to provide you a walkthrough. I will certainly add this linked document to the video description. But just one more thing I'm going to also explain further is that how we are detecting by cogn how cognitive search is detecting which vector embeddings or word embeddings is closer to the question that I ask when I chat with my data. Let's say I ask a question about topic A. So that topic A will be converted to word embeddings. And then that word embeddings should be compared with the embeddings that I have with Azure Cognitive Search vector database and give me the closest one. But what do we mean the closest one? Here it has been fully explained that how a cognitive search is doing so, but long story short, it is using k nearest neighbors. So it will sort of map the vector space of the embeddings, and with this algorithm, it needs to specify 
which is actually using something called hierarchical navi navigable small worlds or HNSW, which is a type of K nearest neighbor. Sorry, uh, yes, it is actually a nearest neighbor algorithm that will identify what what vector embeddings are the closest one to the question embeddings that you have asked and then it will re retrieve it back for you so i want to show you now a quick demo of how you can generate embeddings push them to azure cognitive search generate index out of it and start asking question so let me open up the code there you go i will also add the link of the source that gave me the idea of this code and I used this code from there so you can check that out. It has it was recommended that I need to certainly have these pip packages installed. I want to use Langchain for having a chat and conversation with my data. And I need to also install Azure search documentation. I'm gonna show you why. It, we're gonna use that actually for cognitive search. Definitely opening is needed and Azure identity. Now I need a couple of credentials for connecting to my Azure OpenAI service for generating embeddings and also, of course, answering the questions in my chatbot. And also, I need to connect to my cognitive search service for pushing my embeddings there and do the indexing and retrieve the knowledge from there. So you need to have all these credentials in a sec secrets.env file to load it from there. Like You can have it as an operating system environment or this just for the test, I hard-coded them and I removed them after I executed this uh, code. Now, where you can grab this, let me show you how you can grab OpenAI key and OpenAI base and how you can grab the service name for cognitive search and the key of that. And you're going to create an index of our word embeddings. So that's just a random name I chose that can be anything for you. So let me show you in Azure portal how we can grab this information. Okay. So this is my OpenAI service. You just click on key and endpoint. You will see that there is an endpoint here highlighted and the key of your Azure OpenAI. So these are two info that you need for connecting to your Azure OpenAI. And for cognitive search, here it is. This is my cognitive search. You can just copy the URL from here. And if you click on keys on the left side, you need to also copy one of the keys here, this is also needed for connecting to cognitive search. Now, getting back to my code, assuming that you grab all this info, you come here. Again, this is just a place that I grab this information to the code. But now, first of all, I need to initialize two models. The first one, GPT 3.5, this is the one that uh, the initial chat GPT use. I want to use this model from my Azure OpenAI for having that chat conversation and answering my question. And I also want to use Ada for generating word embeddings of the data that I have. Where is the data? The reference code that I use had some sample data. So I'm using that. Let me actually show you. So this is actually the folder that I'm using that I have my Python code that I'm providing walkthrough, the secrets that I have added here, and the data I downloaded from that reference code that has some information. I think it's about OpenAI, Azure OpenAI documentation. There you go. These are just sample texts that I want to chat with them and index them uh, with their word embeddings using cognitive search. So getting back to the code, this is the, uh, the model that I'm going to use, and of course, uh, with the only information needed for the authentication. And now I also need to connect to cognitive search for indexing those generated word embeddings. I grabbing these credentials from the top that is specified. And then I say for generating embeddings, I'm using this embedding here, which is using my other Azure OpenAI model. That's it. Then. I haven't created the embeddings yet. I just specified the model that I'm going to use. So I'm loading the data here under the, the, the current working directory that I am in, the text files that I showed you. And of course, you need to chunk the data. As usual, we chunk the data and then we generate embeddings here. The chunk size is 1000. I think that was the default value. You can set up some overlapping in case for best practices. Here, I just added zero, but just making sure that you're not losing some context when you chunk the data, you can duplicate some portions of each chunks with an overlap size here. 
And that's it. Then I split my data and then I add documents there to my cognitive search. And of course, by adding, I mean, I not only add the data, I also add uh, the word embeddings as well. Now, here I'm going to create a conversation scenario using Langchain. So I'm importing Langchain that I'm saying that I want to use my large language model, which is UPD 0.5, to answer some questions based on the sources that I am providing and retrieving them using cognitive search. How I retrieve them? I'm using cognitive search ACS. That is coming from here. And then when it is ready, I executed that actually, it generated word embeddings, then I started to ask questions like, what is Azure OpenAI service? If you remember, that was in one of my text files. So it went all the way to Azure Cognitive Search. It first calculated the word embeddings of this question. Then it compared the distance of the word embeddings of this question with the word embeddings I generated for my text files, with the chunks of them, and it answered me based on the closest word embeddings. And there you go, this is the answer. I tried also another answer, and then you go, the answer got generated here. But let's see what happened when I generated the word embeddings out of these tags and I stored them to cognitive search. So if I go back to my Azure portal, this is the cognitive service that I had, and I used it for generating, uh, storing those word embeddings. And you can see MG test is created. Why? Because I just simply used this name for my index name, but that can be anything technically. And let me click on that. It is telling me I had six documents. By the way, I didn't have six. These are chunks. I just have, I think, three text files, but I chunked them. That's why I have six here. And now, well, because these are now just vectors, let me actually add just a number to see if it can code anything for me. OK, there you go. This is an example. I want to show you what's happening here. So you can see that this, this is the content of that chunk. So this is the actual text that I had. And then it generated the vector out of this context. And this is the vector. So when I do vector search, I'm calculating the distance of my vector embedding question versus this content vector that I refer to. And there you go. It is actually getting generated and stored here for me with some metadata. For example, what's the source of data? That's going to be used when, if you want to add citation on if your chatbot answered the question, you want to know based on what source of data. You can use this metadata. But you can see this is just a vector query that I use from the code. But again, Cognitive Search previously had different ways of querying your data. For example, semantic search that I just explained that. So you can activate it as well, enrich your indexing. And when you retrieve your information from the search, don't just rely on semantic search or keyword-based search. You can even have now vector search, as we just actually implemented that. And I think by default, when you generate word, uh, when you store your word embeddings in cognitive search, this is actually how my index and fields are generated. So it generates an ID, the content, which is my text file source data, the vectors that I showed you, that, and the metadata, which is talking about the source of data, where I grab these word embeddings. OK, so that was, of course, a pretty simple and quick explanation of, first, what is vector search? And making sure that I'm updating you with what has been recently added to Azure Cognitive Search, I think, which is a, it's a great contribution. What's going to be the proposed value of that and how you can enrich it with some other retrieval knowledge and then just quickly show you how you can implement that quickly through the code. And as you saw, I'm no longer using the, the native cognitive search indexing or semantics. So I didn't use any of them. I just simply generated my word embeddings and stored them in cognitive search without necessarily creating an external vector database, launching Redis and figuring out how I, I put all those with some metadata stuff in my vector database. None of them this connection to Azure Cognitive Search, and this magical part took care of everything for me. And you saw that I was able to ask some questions about my data. Now I am chatting with my data, and it worked properly. All right, I hope, well, I'm talking for 15 minutes just for the tutorial part. I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, just making sure I'm talking about all of possibility and you're aware of what's going on and the trend with Cognitive Search and this um, chat with your data scenario. But I hope that was short 
and comprehensive enough to let you start and know what's going on there but as always you're more than welcome to ask your questions or any comment you have downside in the video all right that's all there is only one thing that is in common in all human being across the world imperfection you can try so hard to be perfect but that never gonna happen because it is not in human nature to be perfect and you know what is the solution for it forgiveness take one moment and forgive someone who has sinned against you and at the same time try to ask for forgiveness who you have sinned against them this will move a big stone from your soul and it will bring so much positive energy to you you will be free more powerful and more concentrated dream big my friends believe in yourself and take action till next video